Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So let's get into today. I want to talk today about structural conflict. Structural conflict. See, most of us are in a structure that won't allow us to manifest what we want and it doesn't seem to matter how much effort desire passion talent motivation that we have we're not able to break through and have what we want is there anyone that this has happened to or is it just me and and uh and my friends we all know this already that success is not uh personal and how do we know this is true? Well, we all know somebody who's got all the talent in the world, but has never had the success they want. And then we know others, I mean, pop music, for example, where, you know, some people, I, I don't really know where the talent is, but they're in the right structure and they're able to be uh, successful. Is it true? We all know someone who's got amazing work, amazing arts, they've got, they're talented. And we also know that it's true that there's, there's no one right way to do success. Some are vegetarian, some just eat meat, some wake up early, some are positive. Guess what? Some really successful people are negative. Some people feel happy, some people feel sad, some people do. There's no, there's no thing. And I think since, you know, Think and Grow Rich came out, you know, 100 odd years ago, well, it must be 100 years ago, getting close anyway, 1920s. So, I think we've been in this whole idea that you've got to think the certain way, you've got to do all these things. And uh, the, the truth is, is there's a lot in there that's true, but it gets misguided and we actually create a different identity. And that identity works against us a lot of the time. And so it's, you know, the, the secret and these other things came out and they're all great if you're in the right structure. However, if you're in a structure of I got to fix myself, so I got to fix myself, so I'm not good enough unless I think this way and I attract this, you're not actually, you know, doing the secret. Instead, you're putting out to the universe, I'm not good enough, I'm this, and you're all these other things. So we have a structural conflict. And how this works, we have a desired reality up here and a current reality here. And we would really like the current reality to move to uh, the desired reality. But what seems to happen is every time we move a little bit towards it, we end up coming right back. And that's because there's conflict in the structure. It's not just an advancing structure. There's another conflict in this structure. And so that conflict can be many different things. But normally, it's down here and it's our identity. So our identity, as soon as we start moving forward, the tension to this rock solid identity starts to pull us back. And what happens is we end up living this life that sometimes we're, it's a little bit better and then sometimes it's a little bit worse, but we never end up getting to where we want because of this magnetic field of our past reality and our identity. So then we do the obvious thing, we get it. And so we start focusing and instead of going for what we want, our life comes about coming down here and we try to resolve or fix our identity. And so life comes about focusing on that and we forget about what we're actually going for. So this is structural conflict in one diagram. And you know, Robert Fritz, uh, an amazing, amazing guy, really, really pointed this out to me in 2009, is, is, is structure has integrity and structural conflict. Uh, Kyle says, so how do you change your identity? Well, actually, you don't need to change your identity. You just need to bring your identity and stop thinking your identity has anything to do with your desired reality, which I'm going to I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about today. 
And so we don't, because see, see that obvious question uh, that I got asked just then was, and by the way, if you type into me just to all panelists, I won't, um, I won't say your name or whatever, but I'll still read out your comments, okay? So it's completely private if you want to just talk to me. So just know you can change that between the group or just me, and, and I do read it most of the time. So what happens is we go, well, look, well, all oh, right, Chris, that makes sense. I should go fix myself. I got to go improve myself. I got to go do all of these things, and uh, and this structure creates uh, creates a lot of a lot of conflict. So I want to I want to ask you to do uh, a little bit of a, an exercise with me. I want you to write down all the things in your life that you want to avoid. So this is an exercise: pen and paper, type it out. What are all the things that you want to avoid happening? What are all the things you want to avoid? Maybe type them in here to me or write them down. And just, you know, what do you want to avoid? You want to avoid bankruptcy, failure, looking stupid. Uh, what do you want to avoid? It's not a trick question. It's not a trick question. I'm not going to go, oh, well, there you go. It's not. I just want you to get this out. Pain, being broke, being judged, staying overweight, judgment, failure, pain, loss. What do you? What is your worst case? Like, what is? What? What would you absolutely not want to happen? Yeah, you, you say it as a joke, Kat and, and Kyle, but it's interesting because uh, that's a belief that that's, that's actually, you know, your reality. Yeah. Most people um, live more that they're scared of dying rather than they're, they're for living, you know. But I get it. I get it. Cool. Being alone, being broke, these sort of things. Okay. So what happens is most of us are in a structure where even our goals are designed by what we want to avoid. And this structure creates such conflict because if you're trying to avoid it, it exists. It exists. It's alive. If you're trying to avoid it, there's energy on it. Right? There's energy on it. True. So when we say that we want to avoid it, there's energy on it. There's a, I don't want that to happen. There's energy on it. And this is an interesting concept because you don't have to avoid something or resist something for it not to happen. See, there's a very big difference between creating confidence and avoiding anxiety. There's a very big difference from um, trying to, you know, to move away and get away from something than trying to create something. But most of us have never had any practice in creating. And so something happens and it triggers all sorts of things in our life, you know. And, you know, we go, oh, well, you know, now I've lost this or this thing's happened or whatever. And we create. And it's all created in a structural conflict because we wanted to avoid something. We wanted to avoid something. See, the problem is, isn't actually in the circumstances. The problem's not in the circumstances. The problems are in your beliefs and thoughts and feelings about those circumstances. I'll say that again, because it's very important. The problem isn't the circumstances. It's your beliefs, your thoughts, your feelings about the circumstances. See, you could be broke or overweight or unhealthy. Your feeling about that circumstances makes it a problem. You see, it's not actually a problem 
for your super conscious. You can shift and change everything. Your cells regenerate themselves all the time. You know, you're always recreating. You know, you might lose an income source. You're always recreating. It's you're never losing. You've gained more, but it's your thoughts and feelings about the, the circumstances aren't the problem. And so we can find ourselves in this structural conflict. The structural conflict has been created because we've been trying to avoid something happening rather than trying to create something. Who can see the huge difference in a person who's trying to create and go for something versus someone who keeps trying to avoid it. And guess what keeps happening? For a while they avoid it, but it's still there. For a while they avoid it and then boom, there they are again, right on the edge of their failure, right on the edge of what they don't want to happen. So they avoid it, they do some stuff, they get away from it, boom, they're always there, boom, they're always there. It's like an anchor. It's an anchor that they can't escape because they keep on trying, they force it, they push, they go, boom. And they end up back. And their life is that, oscillating. They're oscillating. Who's felt oscillating like that before? Who's found that? And so that's a huge structural conflict. That's a, that's a structure that's a bungee cord trying to run away from something. What we want is we want to create a structure that advances like a car. And when a car advances, there's nothing. It's, it's, it, it's just moving forward. There's nothing there. It just goes, you see? Whereas I don't want that. I'm going to get away from it. That always exists. When you are trying to avoid it, you will always be in an oscillating structure. So the obvious thing is to go to it and want it, dissolving any resistance to having that. When you don't have resistance to it, that's when you enter the wizard's gate and that's when you get to create. Well, that should be a blooming quote, isn't it? When you have no resistance, what was it? Whatever I just said, it's on recording, Rochelle. You get to create, you enter the wizard's gate when you don't have resistance. And so this is one of our goals is to be completely okay with the opposite, to depolarize it. to be completely okay with the opposite. Because then you're okay with it. You're not trying to get away with it. So what happens is this becomes this. You're cool with it. And then suddenly you become your desired reality. You're not trying to get away from anything. You already are it. See, one of my mentors, he said to me, you know, he goes, Chris, if you can't feel healthy in a body that's cleaning out toxins. If you can't feel healthy and grateful in a body that's that's got a heartbeat and doing everything. And so if you can't feel health in that, you won't feel health in a different body. If you can't feel health in abundance of, you know, running water and a beautiful sunny day, you won't feel abundance with a billion dollars. If you can't feel love when you're sitting by yourself in your own energy, you won't get love from someone else, you see. This is the key. It unlocks everything. You unlock that wizard's gate. You step into it and you, you love what is. You feel it all now. And from there, you create. You hold up your magic wand. I'm going to have that. But you know that it won't make your life better. What? It won't make your life better because no future moment can ever be better than what you're allowed to experience now. No future moment can be better than what you're allowing yourself to experience now.
true. That's Beans the Beagle. She always, she always barks up a storm when she knows there's truth dropping. The dogs do agree. I'll close the door. The dogs know, Beth. So what's landing? What's landing? What are you getting? You can't, if you find yourself back in a position you've been before, it's a structural conflict and it will keep on happening until you become okay with it. You see, until you become okay with it. Until you're not resisting it. Now, how easy is that to say? Easy to say, but that's the work. That's the work. We must understand this. We must understand that the, the structural conflict is not a creation conflict. And, and this is one of the reasons why we created Magnetic Mind. Uh, you know, one of my past mentors, she's amazing. She you know, founded some of the work I love, but, but everything was a problem that needed fixing. Everything was just looking for problems. And it's not the same as creating. It's not the same as creating. In fact, uh, I, I found that to be the biggest concern in, in, the, in the personal development and healing world is the idea of, of getting, away from the, getting away from the now. So how does this happen? Well, we... We start off as a pure creative spirit. And we, we're born. And in a pure creative spirit, we have it all. We have it all. We're carried around by our mother. We're carried around by our mother. We're fed. Everything's good. Then we're born into this world. And as we're born, we get wounded. We get wounded because all of a sudden we realize that we don't just have it all. Everywhere that, that you look when you get, when you're born, you get wounded, you go, oh, wow. So I have to be good to get love. I have to do work to get food. Oh, and so we create beliefs and structures to handle this. See, we're pure creative spirit. You know, we're consciousness walking around in, in this lifetime. But we get wounded and we realize, well, I don't have it all. So we make up some beliefs here, which uh, the beliefs are, I have to blank to get blank. And this creates our orientation for life. And it's a very important thing. So this, this, this makes our orientation. This is how we're orientated to life. And this becomes how life is. How life is. I have to, to get this. So I have to do this to get this. This becomes how life is. And this creates our reality. This creates our reality. Our reality is based around that because of this wounding. And so most people set up a life where they're just following some unwritten rules that they created at a very young age, either passed down to them or uh, they made up. And so let me ask you, what rules did you make up? We are the superconscious awareness. What rules? Let me see in the chat box here. Yeah. Right on. Me too. So that those are my rules, right? <laughs> those are mine. I created those rules too. So let's unpack and let's look at uh, 
let's look at some, I have to pretend to be happy. Yeah, yeah, right on. My dad, yeah. Where's everyone else at? And so we create these rules and I like to call these sabotage patterns, okay? And I see six, six core themes. Six core themes, right? The first theme I see is I'm not worthy. We made up a, a belief here that I'm not worthy. So I have to be worthy or I have to do this to be worthy. I'm not inherently worthy. The next one, I'm not inherently good enough. So I must do this, work on myself to become good enough. The next one, I'm not perfect. I've got to perfect myself. I've got to be perfect. I've got to pray the right way. I've got to do this, eat the right food. I've got to be perfect. Then I will. I've got to perfect myself. Capability. I'm not capable. Something, something wrong with me. I need more. I need this. I'm not capable. I need to learn more. I'm not capable. I'm insignificant. No one sees me anymore. I'm insignificant. I have to do something to be significant. And the last one is I don't belong. I don't belong. So I don't belong. And so I've got to do something to belong. And so let me ask you, what rule structures did you create up? Because uh, this is... This is a very important thing. Now, we're not going to go into problem solving, but it's just interesting to have some awareness around that.